744. Welcome back to BT. We're talking about video game addiction this morning. The WHO, World Health Organization, does relate it to mental health issues. Camadere is here uh, from Game Quitters. Now, I want to start off with your personal experience with video game addiction. By the age of 21, an addict for 10 years, how did it impact your life? For me, you know, this is my own personal experience. So video game addiction was something that caused me to drop out of high school, never graduate. And while all my friends were off to college, I was actually living in my parents' basement, gaming up to 16 hours a day. Wow. I was very depressed, pretended to have jobs, deceived my parents, and eventually I actually got to a point where I wrote a suicide note, and that's where I decided to make a, make a change. So what does video game addiction look like in comparison to someone who's just playing for the fun of it and can easily walk away? Negative impact is where I start. So if gaming is a positive thing in your life, if it's not causing you to, you know, struggle at school with your grades or, you know, pretend to have jobs or, you know, struggle with relationships, then it's fine. But if it's causing you to have a negative impact, that's really something you want to be watching out for. And you also want to watch out for, you know, is it causing you to have withdrawal symptoms, anxiety if you're not playing and things like that. Do you think, I mean, I made an assumption there a moment ago when I said someone who can just play video games and walk away. Is there a healthy amount of video game playing in your opinion? Absolutely. And, you know, we know from research that it's between 1 and 10% and of people who play who actually struggle. And so, you know, that means that like about 90% of people who play are completely fine. I think that's an important thing in this conversation is that there are some people who play who struggle and there are some people who play and they're fine. And it's more about your own personal relationship to it. And if someone is struggling, then how can we help them? Let's talk then, but I think the answer to this question may be fairly complex, but let's say in your personal uh, struggles with video game addiction, why did you become an addict and not just someone who can just play for the fun of it? For me, there were four reasons why I game. The first was to escape. And so, you know, I was bullied a lot. And so gaming allowed me to escape from my problems. The second is social connection. So gaming allowed me to socially connect. And it was my entire group of friends. I also gamed because it showed me constant measurable growth. It allowed me to see progress in life. And I also played because it gave me a sense of purpose. And so those are emotional needs that gaming fulfills. And when gaming is fulfilling all of those needs and you don't have a, a balance of different activities to, you know, manage stress, for example, that's where it can become a problem. Was there one moment in your life where, you know, you saw the light and realized that you were an addict or did it take people in your life to kind of alert you to what was happening? I didn't start identifying with being an addict until many years later actually but when I wrote a suicide note that's where I realized I no longer felt safe with myself I no longer felt like I could prioritize my health and well-being and I needed to get help and I could no longer try to pretend to do this on my own. So you, I saw this tweet from last week and I thought this was pretty profound and it has to do with uh, you know this new generation of college and university students 80 percent according to your tweet are expected to at least occasionally play video games during their college time but according to you no colleges are doing anything to prepare for you know what could be called an epidemic of sorts what do you think the colleges should be doing well, right now, colleges are integrating esports, which is more organized gaming. And so you can actually, as a student now, get a scholarship to go be a gamer at school. And I actually think that's a good thing. I, I'm a huge advocate for gaming as a healthy thing, and I'm an advocate for people being able to earn money and all of that. And I also know that colleges refuse to bring me to come and speak. They refuse to do any prevention work around this issue, and they're not prepared for it. And the number of college students who are coming in, or the number of students who are coming into college who are gamers, nowadays is almost all of them. And so to not be preparing, you know, to understand what to look for and, and how to support people, and just even have that as part of the conversation, I think is is, is dangerous. When it comes to getting treatment for video game addiction, it can probably be a very scary thing to stop cold turkey. So what does video game addiction treatment look like? The first thing you want to do is you want to identify why you play and make sure that you find replacement activities. So find new ways to deal with stress, find new ways to socially connect, find new ways to feel a sense of progress in life. You also want to make sure that you manage your withdrawal symptoms. So you know how are you going to deal with cravings? How are you going to deal with the different emotions that come up? You also want to structure your time. Do you think it's necessary to go to an actual treatment facility or do you think it's something that can be done on your own? Most people aren't going to go to professional help, even if that's what we encourage. 
So if you're out there and you feel like you want some help and you're willing to go to a therapist, that's fantastic. But a lot of people are going to be more comfortable watching a video on YouTube or, or finding help online. And that's why you know our community Game Quitters is so important for people because it gives them a place to feel less alone. And just really quickly for anyone who's watching right now who just identifies video game addiction in a, in a family, uh, you know, friend or, or a loved one, what would you say to them as a first step? Find resources, and, and that's on GameQuitters.com. All right, well, there we go. Thank you so much, Cam. Thank you. For sharing your story with us and potentially helping out some people who may be struggling with video game addiction.